I'm the uh, executive chairman of uh, Generation Mining. Um, and in three, less than three short years since we acquired this project, we're, uh, we're now getting very close to getting ready to build it. So uh, we, uh, just to sum up on the investment proposition here, we uh, did a feasibility study uh, last year. Uh, it showed a net present value of just over a billion Canadian dollars and an IRR of 30% at uh, significantly lower metal prices than we have today. Uh, we've got the favorable metals. Uh, uh, palladium is, of course, used in uh, the clean air out of uh, car exhaust. Uh, copper, of course, is a big EV um, uh, uh, component. Um, we've also assembled what we think is an absolutely top-notch uh, team of mine builders to put this thing together. Uh, we've got a 13-year mine life uh, uh, producing uh, on an equivalent basis of 245,000 ounces a year. In the initial years, it'll be well over 300,000, and uh, that's over a 13-year mine life, and we're still trading at a very, very significant discount to our, to our NPV. And, and lastly, we uh, announced uh, uh, several months ago a stream deal with Wheat and Precious. They're going to be putting up $240 million towards the uh, construction of the mine, and we're now working on the banking to, uh, to improve that further. And this is on our website. I won't get into all the different people, but we've got, uh, we've got a great operating team. We've also got a really strong independent board of directors. These are accountants, engineers, lawyers. Um, they, they cover the, the very, very top levels of the mining industry, active people, um, chairman of Alamos, for example, the president of Capstone Mining. Uh, we're, we're, we've got really top people here. Uh, I've got about 180 million shares outstanding. Uh, and a $136 million market cap. And we've got some pretty smart shareholders. We've got uh, Sibanye Stillwater, you may know them out of South Africa. They're the largest platinum and second largest palladium company in the world. As a producer, Eric Sprott, Lu Lucas Landino, Cisco Mining has been involved in every one of our financings. And the directors and officers have bought 7% of the company, a lot of that uh, right out of the market, and they continue to buy. Uh, we've got a resource uh, measured and indicated only of uh, 4.2 million ounces of palladium, a billion pounds of copper, and over a million uh, ounces of platinum. And uh, palladium, as you may know, is used in catalytic converters in cars. And what has happened over the last 10 years is, is uh, world production has been stagnant in terms of uh, mine uh, production. Uh, it has increased somewhat in recycling. But at the same time as that's been happening, China and Europe have increased the palladium loading requirement in every automobile. So supply has uh, been stagnant while demand has been increasing, and that's why we have a $2,000 an ounce uh, palladium price. And that's with car production significantly lower than demand. And, and that's due to, the, of course, the, sh the chip shortage and other supply shortages. So what's happening is, is uh, you've got a, a, a low, um, lower than uh, possible uh, automobile manufacturing situation going on, and you've still got a strong price. So if, if the chip shortage ever does end, and they're talking about that taking uh, as much as another uh, half a year to a year, uh, you're going to see an explosion in car manufacturing, and I think you're going to see a much, much stronger palladium price uh, happening on the back of that. Uh, copper, again, I won't get into copper demand. You guys probably see a lot about it, but uh, copper, again, there's not enough copper in the world to get this electric car thing going that a lot of the leaders, uh, world leaders want to see happen. Uh, they're going to need a lot more copper mines. So we're, gonna, we're expecting a, a large uh, <coughs> uh, increase in the copper price in the, in the years to come and as we get closer and closer to production. So we're in northwestern Ontario. Of course, uh, the Ford government uh, got re-elected. They're very, very strong proponents of our project. Uh, their, their Minister of, of Natural Resources has stated several times that he wants to see this project go ahead. So we're in a great location. Uh, locally, infrastructure is nothing short of fantastic. And in fact, it's saving us hundreds of millions of dollars in CapEx. We've got the Trans-Canada Highway coming through the property. There's a town just south of us. There's an airport right on the property. There's the railroad coming through. And there's a new power line that was just constructed by the Ontario government that comes right through our property. We're going to get grid power, 100% uh, carbon-free power coming right through our property. And it'll be a lot cheaper than the other local mines in, in the vicinity of us have to generate their own power with natural gas. Uh, so it'll be more expensive and, uh, and not as green. 
Uh, again, this is on our website. I won't get into all the people, but we have the team of people in place, the core of the people to build this mine. And these are people who've built many, many mines, big open pit mines, bigger than this, um, uh, several, and several of them. So the feasibility study we did last year, 245,000 ounces a year, as I mentioned, uh, well over 300 for the first couple of years. Uh, CapEx is 665 million Canadian, um, and the all-in sustaining cost is about 800 bucks. Um, base case uh, IRR of 30%. Um, and at, uh, at, when we released the feasibility study, the metal prices at the time were a little bit higher than they are now, and uh, we had a base price, uh, a, 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 MPV of, uh, of $2 billion and an IRR of 47%. You don't see very many mining feasibility studies that high of an IRR. That's really good use of capital. And uh, the base case payback is, is, is less than two and a half years, and the spot payback is a year and a half. Again, exceptional numbers. You don't see them very often. And I won't get into the, the dense detail on the, on the sensitivities here, but I'll just point out a couple of things on the, uh, on the top row there, the, um, the net present value at different palladium prices. You can knock palladium all the way down to $1,250, and you've still got a 20% IRR. You don't see too many projects. Uh, there's no, I can't point to a gold project where you could knock $750 off the gold price and still have a 20% IRR. Uh, going down to the bottom section, the CapEx, again, um, everybody's worried about increase in CapEx, and, and we are too. Um, we think that it, there will be some increases in the CapEx. We're getting a handle on that right now. But even if you increase that CapEx by 20%, which we think it's going to be less than that, We've still got a 24% IRR, and we've still got a net present value of $940 million. With that increase in CapEx, the net present value hardly goes down at all. So that really shows you how, how robust a project we have. And just one last point on this slide, the copper uh, price at uh, 450 copper, copper pays all of our operating costs. That means all of that palladium, hundreds of thousands of ounces a year, come out free at uh, 450 copper. And that's, you don't see very many projects with a byproduct that strong. Uh, again, this is a fairly dense slide, but I'll just point out a couple of things. We've got $240 million coming from uh, uh, Wheaton. We've now got a syndicate of banks that we're uh, um, getting to know and, and, and putting together. Uh, we've announced the other day that we had indi indicative uh, um, offers from banks, uh, preliminary offers of uh, around a billion dollars. We're seeking 400 million US dollars in, uh, in bank financing to go with that 240 million from Wheaton. Uh, we expect to have that arranged by September or so. And then um, uh, after that, we're looking at some mezzanine financing, some secondary debt uh, that would come from possibly a private equity company or possibly one of the four smelters that uh, are interested in taking our concentrate. And uh, we're looking at uh, adding on another layer of secondary debt. With that really short payback period, uh, this project can handle some debt and we're not afraid of the interest because uh, we'll be paying it back very, very soon. And then there will be an equity component at some point. Uh, we're trying to keep that as small as we possibly can. The banks, though, do want to see some, uh, some skin in the game from the shareholders. Whoops, sorry, uh, wrong direction. Um, and just a quick point on this slide, we've got, uh, uh, did a study on the carbon footprint of our project and we're in, the, in, in a copper equivalent scenario. We are in the bottom 4% worldwide. So uh, on an ESG front, uh, this is something that'd be very attractive to uh, investors that take uh, ESG seriously. So I just wanna sum up that in the few short years we've had this project, we did a PEA, new resource, we did a feasibility study. We've gotten permitting. We're three quarters of the way through permitting. We expect to have our indication from the panel reviewing our project by the uh, by uh, August at the very latest. We've got First Nations uh, preliminary agreements. We've got the Wheaton deal done. We're, we've got the banking almost done, and uh, we're, we're, we're we've just done an incredible amount in less than three years. And just to indicate uh, where we are compared to a lot of the gold companies. I know we're not gold, but uh, we're trading at less than, uh, uh, currently actually about 15% of our net present value. The average in the gold space is around 90%. So we think we have some room to move. So just to sum up, great feasibility study, good team of people. We've got the right metals for the times and uh, we're trading at a large discount to net present value, but we're gonna have this mine financed this year. We're expecting to get our permits um, 
early next year and begin construction immediately. Cutting trees will be the first, uh, the first step, and we're hoping to start that in, uh, in February or March next year and uh, start uh, pouring concrete after that. So uh, this, this project is imminent, and uh, thank you all for your time. Thank you.